we're going to paint this. So I'm going to hold it really steady. If you want to take a screenshot, all right, I'll set them, hold it steady. I'm trying. Take a screenshot with your phone or control, I think it's control command four, takes a screenshot on your laptop just so that you can have this to refer to. I'm going to leave it up here which I feel like looks a little blurry. No, there we go. Okay, so I went ahead and painted the background dark blue. I used, um, hello, I used Faro and Ball Haig Blue. It's one of my favorite colors. And then, as usual, I'm gonna be using Golden Artist Acrylics, Titanium White, and then my three primaries because you can mix any colors you want with these three. So I'm trying to make it so you can see it and I'm not in your way. So we're gonna see how this setup goes. If anybody has any questions or anything, let me know. Okay, so I use phthalo blue, the green shade. With these three colors you can make literally any color. And then the yellow is, I can't say it, Benzimidazolone Yellow Medium. I'm gonna to have to call the company and discuss the name. They need to talk to the, the OPI people. That is not the best name. But anyway, you want a blue, a yellow, and a red. We're using a magenta for our red. It's basically just a really cool red. It, has a little, it feels a little more pink but the range of purples that we can make are much better. So, can you see that you can see my paint? Okay, excellent. Okay, so one of the cool things about painting over there, people think that it's hard to paint glass because your mind makes assumptions. Your mind wants to like draw the outline of the whole thing, right? But so essentially what you do, all you have to do is really slow down and be in the moment and actually look at what you're painting. Because if you just, and I printed a close up, let's see. I'm holding that in the right spot. So look at this close up. Basically very, very pale color. Then there's some spots where you just can't see that it's there. You just ignore it. So it's not as hard as it looks. Okay, so let's start. When I mix my colors, I like to use at least a little bit of all three colors that are on here. It keeps them from being overly bright. So I'm gonna start loosely painting the jar. And I am gonna use a lot of white and a little bit teeny bit of the blue, the blue really goes a long way. But to tone it down, I'm gonna have add in a little bit of the other two colors. It's already it. And if it gets too, so let's say like right now, it, get, it got a little too blue. You add the colors complement and the complement of the opposite, which is also called the complement, is orange. See how it neutralizes it? Makes it a nice neutral, I feel like and yes I am going to sort of outline the vase because I don't know that's just what our mind wants to do right and I'm going to look at this You know what? I'm gonna figure it out. And let it be loosey goosey. Have some energy on this thing. You know what I mean? I feel like 
Sometimes when we paint, we get all controlled and tight. And then look at this. Look at this shadow in the back. It's a little bit darker, a little more neutral, a little bit blue. Not shadow, but the glass just basically distorts what's behind it. And the thing about painting glass is it depends on the light and what's happening in the room. It's almost, it's almost easy. So see those kind of dark grays right in there? I'm just gonna. See how they're swirly like the glass? And then when I'm actually, when I'm painting glass, I do like to use the background color. So I'm gonna use some of this Hague blue and just mix in some white and some other colors. So I'm gonna put that on my palette. Is that totally blocking the mixing? Add a little white. You know what I mean? Cause it kind of, and then right in here. Whatever's in the room comes through in the glass. And it takes, it does take a little bit of practice. But it's less white than you think. It's actually, it's less paint than you think. Like look right here, you can't even see. It's just the, um, in the end, I'll usually end up removing a lot of the white paint that I used. Because, isn't it amazing how much lighter Faint looks, it dries really dark. So just, you know, kind of loosey-goosey get some paint on there. Get the general shape of your base, right? Because then we're gonna come back in, move that blue. I almost asked if you guys were hot. Because it's hot in the studio. I'm gonna turn on the AC. Tell me if it messes with the sound. Okay, so now we're going to look closely. Let's do one of the stems. Okay, let me show you this. See, if you look up close, there's a very light highlight. And then there's that warm green and then a little bit cooler and then the real strong shadow. So your mind would tell you oh, the stem, this whatever, this flower stem. It's just green, but it's not. We just saw it has three or four different colors. And I'm gonna teach y'all something. If you wanna give something three dimensions, change the temperature. And I'll show you on the green stem what I'm talking about. Let's get a new brush. Let's get a brand new brush. I y'all like using a brand new brush? I do. I'm, I'm gonna move this because there's a good chance I will spill that. Okay, I'm going to check the comments every once in a while. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so let's start. I like to start with the middle tone. So let's make a green, tiny bit of blue, more yellow. And then to keep it overly bright from looking like it came out of a box of crayons, put a touch of the red in there. And yeah, this is a, a trial and error process. You know what I mean? Just keep practicing, and if you mess it up, try again. Don't you worry about it. Okay. Let's paint one of these pretty stems. They look like a big asparagus. Does anybody know what kind of plant this is? Okay, and here's the cool thing. When it goes behind the glass, it distorts a little. That awfully bright green. I did there. Okay, so now I'm going to change the temperature slightly, make it cooler. I'm gonna put more blue in there for the shadow. I'm still gonna keep it green. And we are going to do just straight color mixing because that's I feel like that's so important. 
But the more you use all three colors, the more neutral your color gets and the more it recedes. So it's, to, it's a great way to make your shadows. the shadow kind of makes it three-dimensional so like for the highlight I'm gonna add make it really light And then the surface of the water, let's see, the surface is, we're gonna put it up here. And sometimes the surface of the water just takes some of the green over there. Do you know what I mean? Like you can see, if you really look up close, there's, it's like it, um, yeah. I don't know what the science term is, but it's like it uh, refracts or, you know, there's some science term why the color shows up on the water. But if you look in the picture, there it is. And it might do it down here. Now this blue, it needs to dry, it's going to get darker, I promise. Okay, and I don't know what this plant is that has these kind of red branches, but let's, let's do that next. We're gonna start with the red, then add some blue, and just a little bit of yellow, just to tone it down, make it a more natural, Kind of orangey color, but still keep it nice and dark. And I got a smaller brush, but even on these, you guys stop and slow down. You can see there's a highlight on the little red branch, the little red branch. Then there's sort of the middle color, and there's actually I don't know I forget what you call it, but there's like a highlight on the back, the shadow side. You can paint or draw any absolutely anything. Everything is shape, line, and color. If you slow down and actually look, you'll see it, and you'll see it easily. What happens is your mind thinks it knows what stuff looks like. It's sort of like if a little kid, or not a little kid, an adult, we all do this, was gonna draw a car, your brain would want to make the car tires perfectly round. But the only time the car tires are perfectly round are if you are laying on the ground at 90 degrees to that car. Every other time they're gonna be some form of an elliptical, be it like that. When I work with, sometimes I go into schools and I work with little kids. We do it and we do art together, so much fun. But I always tell them to get out their hand binoculars and look through their hand binoculars. And I'll ask them, I'll say, what color are clouds? And without fail, they all go, white. And then I show them pictures of sunsets where, or sunrises where, the clouds are pink and purple and gray and sometimes even a little green. And I'm like, you know what I mean? We, our mind just makes all these assumptions. 
So if we slow down and we really look at what's going on, then it's going to look more realistic. And you know, more realistic is not, you know, the end all be all of my. So be loose with it because sometimes, like, look right between here and here. You can't, the stem doesn't connect to anything. And sometimes it goes across the water, and sometimes it's a little bit distorted. Like, look over here. So then you can kind of have fun with it. Your brain wants to make a continuous line, which that one doesn't go all the way. This one does a little funky jump. Okay, now let's do the highlight on the red thing. And since it's kind of cool, I'm gonna add a little more yellow and make the highlight a little warmer. And you can always go back. I want you, what I want you to do is be brave because you can always go back and correct it. Oh, how's that working? My green looks a little bright. Acrylics are very forgiving. And you just gotta let them dry a little bit. But I'm looking at it on the computer and I feel like the green of the stems is a little bright. So I'm gonna make a new green that's a little more toned down, a little more neutral. Cause I mean, I want some jewel tones and some pop, but not quite bright. I had a teacher in grad school. This is kind of a long story, but I'm gonna try to make it short. This is one of my best lessons I've ever had in art. His name was Paul Hartley. He taught at East Carolina University, which I love. I thought their art department was amazing. And my goddaughter, Hadley, goes to ECU. Don't you, Hadley? Um, anyway, he was a fantastic painting teacher. He was very, everybody loved him. It was hard to get into his class. Um, there you go, that turned that down just a little. Um, and with him, we worked on one painting a semester. It was a graduate class. And, ooh, look at that one. Um, we worked on one piece the whole semester. And he was a fabulous teacher. He gave great instruction. But then he just walked around and he would say very little. And it was really, you really rarely got a compliment out of him. Okay. Then, here we go. Wait, pause the story. I'm going to do this branch. Which kind of comes out and in. And then. And we're going to put leaves all over this, don't worry. I mean, in mine, you know. I've been painting for a lot of years. And I still get like, ugh, I don't like how it's turning out. Mm. We gotta let go of that. We just gotta let go. Because it's not productive. So anyway, back to Paul Hartley. We did one piece a semester. He never gave out compliments. He was everyone's favorite teacher. And I worked on this piece probably for eight weeks. And we would have, like, our, I think our classes were like three hours long, the graduate seminars. We would just sit there and paint in total silence. And he'd walk around behind us and like observe what we were doing. And one time he stopped in front of mine and he went, oh, mm. And he made some positive sounding noises, you know, to the point like other people were looking over my shoulder to see what I was doing. And I was thrilled beyond belief. Now let's work on these little purple guys. 
I don't know what kind of flowers these are. But anyway, I was like, oh, so excited. And he's like, okay, you're getting somewhere. That was huge for him. I felt like he had like smooched me because it was such a you know big deal for him to say that. And he's like, I really am liking where this is going. And I was liking it too, I was excited. And then he goes, okay, get your gesso, paint over it, and start again. And I was like, what? And I've been working on it for more than a month. And I did not want to do that. And I was like, I'm going to go get another canvas. And he goes, nope, paint over it. Just start paint white totally over. Gesso is basically just cheap white paint. Paint over it and start over. And... Since I was, you know, a 20 year old, I was an adult, I did a very normal thing. I burst into tears in front of the whole class. I was like, why? I don't want to tell me, can I take a picture? And he's like, nope, do it now. And I did, and I cried the whole time. And everybody else, you could tell there was some sympathy. And he looked at me and he said, if you do it once, you can do it again, and it'll be better the next time. And you, you don't want to get locked up and trapped by success. When you feel like a piece is pulled off, you can't, you can't just get stuck because then you'll be, if you're in, you'll be in fear that you'll never do it again. And I did. I painted it again after I stopped crying. <laughs> and it was better. And he was right. And he's like, It'll, you just can't walk around in fear of, you know, you know, your creation, or you'll just stop. I just thought it was a great lesson. What kind of flowers are these? Anybody know? If you do know, will you mention it in the comments? Because I would like to know. So, I'm mixing up a dark, dark purple for these ones in the back. And watch out, I just did it. I just started to like think that I know what flowers look like, you know what I mean? Keep looking at it. This is actually looks like a big clump of grapes. Keep actually, actually stop and look at what you're painting. And you know, do it fast because I don't know, I think the energy comes through when you paint something fast, you know what I mean? Okay, now this to me is looking a little too turquoise. Are y'all feeling that? I might tone that down a little bit. But I'm also, I'm gonna go through and do a few more of these red branches and put, what are these? Okay, the green things go to the flowers, see? I wasn't carefully looking. I like how flower arrangements these days are so, you know, wild and natural. They're not so orderly. Okay, so it looks like the things that look like asparagus go get thinner and have these flowers on. Okay, but also I'm gonna come back in here and put, now that we've painted some branches, come back in here and put some light colors over it. So you can, you get the feel of the glasses there. And change up, so for the glass colors, use all three in different proportions, but make them nice and neutral, and then add some white. That's how you get these fabulous grays. You know how much I love, I love my grays.
Okay, I didn't let that dry quite enough, so see how I drag that? I'm gonna just pause on that. But it's coming together. Okay, you guys, I would love to see. Oh, oh here are now the, um, Well, thank you, Emerald Galaxy, for those very nice comments. I appreciate that. Just keep looking and keep, how do you, he said, how do you make it, he or she, they said, how do you make it look clear on the vase? And I think it's just a matter of really pausing and zooming and looking and, and zooming in to what you actually see. We're going to pause on that because... I needed to let that dry a little bit, so let's do some of the green leaves. Oh, but I was gonna say, Morgan, would you put an email address up? Because I'd love to see, if people are painting at home, if you watch it now or if you're watching it later, um, I would love to see what you guys are doing. If you're painting, send in a picture of your painting or your setup or who you're painting with or anything. We love hearing from you. And if you like this, please subscribe, which I think is just a click somewhere. It's not very tacky. Okay, let's do some of these green leaves. Let's see. And see how, if you really look, I know y'all are getting tired of me saying this, like see how that leaf it looks a little bluer and that one a lot more yellow? Take the time and mix the colors so that you have the variety. That's what makes it look real, is taking the time and looking at which painting. And see, I have a preset in my mind what leaves look like, so I gotta really look at these, because there's some that are just super thin. But we know, sometimes we get lazy, <laughs> me especially. Like right now, I kind of feel like just doing that, da da da. But they they change the way the light hits them. There's some of them that are going to look more yellow because of the way they reflected the light, and they might be bending a little more. And then some of them just look, you know, kind of dark. So what you could do is mix up a series, if you wanted to, you could mix a series of greens sort of in a row from more neutral to brighter. You know what I mean? Like a dark hunter green, like I'm gonna try to do now. When I was teaching on Instagram, we would have just color mixing classes where all we did was mix like one whole session we would just make as many greens as we could because it's limitless when you have good paint like this so if you're not painting I think Morgan might put the um in the description she's gonna put the materials the paints I'm using because this is a great travel set But it's easy to get locked up and get all loose. If you start to feel like your painting is not, you know, good, you're not happy with it, turn it around and don't look at it for um, a couple of days because, like, I've been painting this class before, and I've been painting for years and years and years, 20 years. Um, I feel like I've had a, a decent amount of good feedback but I still get so nervous. I'll be teaching a class and be like, oh, this looks terrible, and lose complete objectivity. And if I, if I sometimes go back and look at it in the video, I'm like, oh, that looks good. Like we get, we're such a harsh critic on ourselves. You know? And that's not good, don't you 
to that. Again, I'm kind of liking this. Okay. So just keep... I'm going to... Maybe I should do, let's see what to do next. Just keep, I just like to keep looking at what you're painting. I love it when you can see a window in the reflections. And if you start walking around and like just paying attention to reflections in glass, they do behave a certain way and you'll start to see patterns. Or walk around and start looking at shadows. Just really start looking. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna put a highlight. Cause that branch back there, this branch is getting a little lost for me. Now they're not all gonna have light on them, but I don't want them to disappear. You know what I mean? Okay, now I'm seeing a step back. Step back and look at it. This branch is kind of bugging me. And just keep... Have fun with it. Go out in your garden and pick a bunch of flowers and then put a bright light on it and see what happens. Let's see, I think I need more yellow-green. And if you mess it up, like Paul Harley made me do, paint over it, start over. Get another canvas. I have so many paintings that have 10 paintings underneath them. And then sometimes had this one, I work, I overworked this painting. I, I don't know how long. And I was so frustrated with it. And I just kept painting and painting. And I finally got so sick of it. And I spray painted over it, the whole thing. And then I got a stencil and I spray painted the number eight, like just nonstop number eight. More off, more really just cause I was hacked off. I was just annoyed with it. And I put it on Instagram and I think I had 20 people reach out to buy it. It was, it was really funny. Cause I'm like, seriously? And not that that, you know, is the only measure, but I felt like when I finally expressed myself and like quit trying, you know what I mean? Like I just, was making that art at that point out of frustration, that was when people connected with it. Okay. Okay. So we're going to wrap it up. I want to make it a short one today. We're going to try to do this. Let's see if I can get on the camera. Here I am. Hi, thank you for joining. Thank you for subscribing. Um, we're gonna try to do this on Sundays when I'm in town. And please send us any feedback, questions. I hope you had fun. I'll see you next week. Actually, I'm out of town next week, but we will be doing a class soon. Thank you.